John here guys and today we're talking about the Esheen EX4 aka the JJRC X12 uh, and this is a 4K gimbal stabilized video drone that is suspiciously reminiscent of the DJI Mavic Air. Uh, now you can see that they pretty much copied the DJI Mavic Air case and the way that the arms fold out have a little built-in landing gear right there they have a gimbal that looks very similar to the design it is a two-axis gimbal which allows you to have stabilization um, and it also allows you to tilt the gimbal uh, up and down so that if you are up high you can look straight down on something or if you're flying uh, you can angle it straight angle it straight ahead or any variation in between now what's notable is that um, DJI has some great releases the Mavic Air being one of them and the new Mavic Mini being one of the best all-around budget options at $400 uh, which is a very similar package to this so why even bother with this well that's because this package that I'm holding right here is $210 that's right $210 so it's basically half uh, and now, you know, just for those that are not in the know, DJI is considered the gold standard. It does have the best software, the best hardware, the best features. But a lot of those things are no longer super proprietary secret sauce. Now, make me no mistake, DJI does have that super special secret sauce, but it's in the software. The hardware is all pretty much generic stuff that anybody can buy and put together, which is what JJRC and Esheen have done right here. So there's no question on whether or not DJI has an edge. They absolutely do. But for you, the first time drone pilot, for you, the first time drone buyer, for you, the FPV racing enthusiast like myself, that wants a camera drone for the occasional nice aerial smooth shot, but doesn't necessarily need one that they can use every day. Um, I just need something to get a shot here and there or to go have fun with, or to let somebody that's a beginner fly because these GPS locking stabilization drones are much easier to fly than the racing drones that I typically fly on this channel. And I think that around 200 ish dollars is really a sweet spot for people that are wanting to jump into a new hobby now take a look for a second at this foam fitted case that everything that comes in this package comes with so that you can take it along with you to the field now my first you know expensive camera drone was a dji phantom 3 um, several years ago and that didn't come with the case I would cart it around in the box that it shipped with just because it was, you know, the most convenient thing to do. And buying a backpack or a special case for that would cost you another 40, 50, 60, 80 bucks or more. And the fact that this one comes with that and it's out of the equation is really nice. That's a definitely a welcome bonus feature. In here, you have the controller or transmitter remote very similar to the dji layout um, has the two antennas that lift up right here as you lift them up it has a little bracket for your phone and that just clips on right there now it's perfectly ready to accommodate your phone has a little strap for the bag itself has a little spot for your battery um, and then if you go down below you have some extra props and a tool to be able to put those on you have the battery charger and a usb cable now i do like that everything including this remote and the battery charger which will charge the battery that comes with this thing all use micro usb so convenient a lot of these things sometimes use uh, different types of cables different types of things proprietary things um this charges with usb now the downside to that is that it does take a while for this battery to charge but it is a good size battery it is an 11.4 volt which i believe that puts it at 3s 
2400 milliamp hour battery so it's a good size battery right here it fits on like a lot of these do you just kind of hold it at the back and then press firmly it locks in place with a satisfying click and you know that it is on there um, you have your sd card slot on the bottom now this is my primary gripe with this thing not the slot itself but the capacity this does have beautiful hd 4k recording uh enabled on this thing and the camera is quite good in fact i can barely tell a difference between the gimbal that is on here and the one that i have on my osmo pocket that i use now if you note the osmo pocket uses the same gimbal that's on the mavic pro in the case you also have some disclaimers and a little instruction booklet i found this particularly helpful in explaining at a glance it's not an encyclopedia volume um, thing you can very quickly flip through it note on what all of the buttons do on here and then it tells you exactly what steps are needed to pair i really like that this one comes with a qr code that launches the app in either the android app store or the ios app store so getting the app installed was super easy it's actually the same app that i used on the jjr cx9 that i reviewed previously and uh it actually had an update available so i was able to get that this thing bound up no problems every time all you do if you're familiar with a lot of these drones to connect them is you turn on the radio and the radio is already bound to the drone itself so what you need to do in order to bind it to your cell phone which some of the other controls and options are on is on your phone you'll go and connect to the wi-fi of the controller you'll see two wi-fi available controller and drone you want to connect connect to the one that says controller the drone itself will be connecting to the controller your phone will be connected to the controller so once you do that launch then you go and launch the app a little pop-up will appear saying do you want to bind hit yes and you're in you should see the image from the screen almost automatically instantaneously now you want to go into the options and do configuration uh, you can do calibration of the gyro calibration of the the accelerometer i think is the other option um, you want to do that doing like a similar dji dance um, i did note that i had some difficulty right next to my house getting a gps lock but when i went pretty much anywhere else now my house you know in the neighborhoods there's a ton of wi-fi but i was still able to take off i know on a lot of these drones you'd get home like a dji and you have to spend two to three hours updating now those updates are generally worth it but when you just want to open it take your present out go to somewhere and get some sweet footage and then you find that you can't do it it's really frustrating this one can do it guys so while it may be a downside is it doesn't have 100 percent of that dji secret sauce it does have a little bit simplified uh set of things now it has some of those advanced features like follow me and all those stuff look if you really want those features and plan on using them regularly i suggest go ahead and spending the extra money for dji it's going to be a little bit more reliable if you just want basic features something that flies well something that stays where it's supposed to when it's in the air something that can get 4k footage something that has a gimbal on board that'll give you super buttery smooth uh images in your video um then get one of these save you know spend only 200 dollars decide if drone flying is for you decide if you'll actually take it with you um, which is actually so much easier with that carrying case i think i'll be taking this with me a lot more i've had other camera drones in the past that didn't come with a case and it's such a small thing that allows you to take it whenever it's just like one more hassle to pack it up um, the case i already took this out to a drone racing fun fly i'll show some footage on the screen here and i was able to while there was you know getting everything situated to start racing with our racing drones put this up in the air it didn't take me long i just turned both things on um bound it to the cell phone and then you arm by hitting both sticks down and outside that is the arm command in order to disarm you just get close to the ground and push the throttle stick which is the left stick down and it will lower itself land and if you keep holding it down the props will stop spinning that is a disarm command for this note 
DJI has the function where you can walk up to the drone as it's hovering and very carefully grab it from below and tilt it and that will deactivate it. The same thing works on these. Uh, now this is a little bit bigger than like the DJI Spark or the X9 or even the Mavic Mini. So I don't really recommend that you do that unless you're like on a boat and somewhere that you can't land very easily. Um, now, one of the things where this will have a little bit more trouble than a DJI is keeping its location. Um, I went and flew it on, uh, I found the windiest day, one of the windiest days lately. We've had a lot of windy days. You'll be able to see some of the bushes kind of moving around. And I did note, um, I feel like DJIs are able to, they'll float if you measured it you know, within maybe three to six inch sphere this will probably float about twice that much maybe as much as three times as much if a strong gust of wind comes i notice it would float as much as almost a foot and then it would kind of go back so it wasn't too crazy um, when you're way up in the air it really doesn't make a difference the camera gimbal is taking all of those jostles out so you really won't notice that in the footage but if you were flying very close to something, you would note that. Now, speaking of that, there is some basic obstacle avoidance, but it's not on the level of DJI. I don't know if that's really necessary though. That's one of the things you're paying for, but as long as you just respect this you know, instrument and you take it to places, you don't try to fly you know, inches away from something, right? You have 4K footage, that means the footage is gonna be super clear. You don't have to get inches away. Um, it does have a sensor on the bottom. I believe that helps for the landing. I don't think it has the um, side sensors like some of the DJI things do. All in all though, um, I was getting about, uh, I, th I think I got 22, 25 minutes, somewhere in there of flight time on this thing. Uh, before it was down to pretty low. I did note that the charger, it is convenient that it goes off a of USB, but it did take a few hours to completely charge it back up. So the 209 kit comes with everything I've shown here, including the case, but there are also two other options in order to get a second battery or a third battery. So if you're gonna be flying um, for extended periods of time, longer than 20, 25 minutes, go ahead and get one of those kits. For me, this is plenty. I usually just have like to have one of these with me. I can take it up, get a couple of shots. That usually takes me no more than five to 10 minutes. You have to remember I am a drone racer and a freestyler. We're used to flying two to three minutes at a time. So even flying five or 10 minutes is super long for me personally. But if you're one of those people that, you know, wants to just get hours and hours of footage, do that. I think three would be perfect. So you can have one on the charger, two ready to go and you'll be able to go like that. I love how small this thing breaks down. Check this out. You just fold the little landing gear feet. Boom. Now it's like, it's, it's basically the same as the Mavic Air. Um, this thing was not super fast, but then again, I'm used to racing drones that go almost 100 miles an hour. I would say this probably goes like I don't know, 35 miles an hour, maybe maybe 40, probably closer to 35, um, which is, you know, you don't need to be going fast when you're getting beautiful footage. In fact, it's probably better the slower you go. As for the controller itself, I do like that this is an upgraded version from the one that's on the X9. The X9, um, I believe you had to put batteries on this one. I like that this one, um, on that one, I like that this one USB charges uh, an internal battery on there. It also has a little bit of extra weight, which feels better in your hand. It has this sort of fake carbon fibery looking skin, which is actually quite nice looking, gives it a premium look. The gimbals are perfectly usable. They're not going to be as nice as, say, my hobby grade racing radio like the Jumper, but the Jumper costs almost as much as this entire kit just for that radio. This is actually pretty smooth. And uh, note that on the camera drones, unlike our racing drones, they have stick centering on all axes. And the reason they do that is because when you let go of the sticks, when you have that GPS lock, this thing will stay where you have put it. So if you don't need those advanced follow course mapping features, this does have it. I wouldn't expect them to perform flawlessly, but 
if you need that, pay the extra for the DJI. If you don't, you just want the occasional um, 4K beautiful footage of a landscape on a vaca of a vacation. If you are like me and would like to have a camera drone but don't necessarily need to tie up one or two thousand dollars on a DJI, if you are a beginner and want to get a first drone for yourself or a child, this is the best option I've seen on the market for it. $200 is such a more accessible price point than $400. And I can't believe that it comes with the battery, the controller, and everything. So check out some more of this footage. Oh, before I go, one other note. Um, I forgot to talk to, about the SD card on this. The SD card maximum capacity is 32 gigabytes. Um, now, I noticed when I first went out to go fly this thing, I put in what I normally put in most of my HD cameras, a 128 gigabyte card. And I noticed that on the app, it kept giving me a warning that said no SD card. Um, but I thought it was just malfunctioning because when I hit record, it was recording. And when I went to the app, I could see the files I had recorded. Well, <laughs> it did not accept that SD card. So that is a big negative. 32 gigabyte is the maximum. You can actually fill that up fairly fast if you're recording in 4K. Um, but I will note, that as long as you've read that, it does say it clearly in the manual, as long as you've read that and you pay attention to it, you have your 32 gigabyte cards. Those are so cheap, they're like eight bucks now. So have a couple of them. Um, it's always better if you're getting beautiful one-time footage that once you get a couple of shots, you swap cards anyway, just as a fail safe to keep that information safe. You don't ever wanna have like a giant card and just keep filling it up with, with beautiful data unless you have offloaded and backed up that data um, but what I will note is that in the instance where it did not recognize the SD card or there was no SD card, when I hit record, it was recording, it was recording to my phone. So in the event that you have an SD card that goes bad, you forget one at home, or you have one that's not compatible, you're not totally lost. You can still record that footage. I don't expect it to be as good as the footage that's on board. When I looked back at it, I was expecting it to be grainy or junky. It was perfectly fine. You know, not, not good enough to probably use for like a professional gig, but you're not gonna wanna use that, this for that anyway. So really, really good option, guys. Um, what is your first drone? If this is gonna be your first drone, feel free to ask me any additional questions in the comments. Happy to answer any of them. Um, my channel also caters to people that want to build their first FPV racing or freestyle drone. So I have tutorials there that you can check out. Um, what a great option. The JJRC X9 now has lowered in price. I've seen it on sale under $170, so that's even lower. I think that this is worth the extra 40 bucks um, because it just is a little more stable. It comes with a case, it comes with a few extra goodies they would have to pay for otherwise. Um, that one does couple of, come with a couple of batteries, but I still think this is a worthy upgrade because it has the 4K and all that stuff. What do you think in the comments, guys? Thanks.